Saturday morning and the people of the town are busy shopping for the weekend. The children are also busy, but in another way, playing. From a very early age, children instinctively play and the recreation ground with its gaily coloured roundabouts and swings hold many promises of new and exciting things to do. The weekend soon passes and children all over the district are on their way to school. Crossing the busy roads is quite a hazardous business, but with help from the many road marshals, the ordeal to a large extent is reduced. The contrast between work and play these days is very much softened and for the young child they have more or less the same meaning. Work is play and play is work. To start the day everybody files into the school hall for prayers. The old days like the old teaching systems were dark and dull with very little to stimulate and advance the child's mind. Even less than a hundred years ago, children were taken off the streets and forcibly put into boarding schools. These schools had the atmosphere of prisons, and the activities were no less prison-like. These were called physical exercises. Today, the imagination and creative instincts of the child are allowed to develop. He discovers things for himself. If he does things wrong, a guiding word from teacher soon puts them right. The secret of today's system is having the accent on learning rather than forcible teaching, with the teacher more as a friend to be respected rather than somebody to be feared. Getting friendly with animals is no problem, but at this age, Having animals that don't easily damage is a great advantage, particularly for the animals, although at times they still encounter the brunt of many hands. Not so our fishy friends. They at least manage to evade all efforts of close inspection. All budding pavlovas. Even the boys have that blissful expression as if to say, one day we'll be appearing at Sadler's Wells. These movements do much to advance the carriage and poise in younger children, ensuring that limbs and bodies become supple. Bags filled with beads are used here to encourage movements that will exercise the body and many of the muscles yet undeveloped. Rhythm, balance and deportment are acquired in this way by coordinating the mind with the body. Many parents will be interested and possibly concerned to see the school bar, particularly when drinks are always on the house. But rest assured, only milk is served, and the evidence of empty crates is proof of its popularity. There is always enthusiasm when it comes to making a noise, and it's no less true here. This enthusiastic gathering of young musicians are fortunate that they are not asked to practice at home, if only for the sake of good relations between parents and teachers. If you want to talk to your friend about the weather, you can always use the telephone, even if your friend is only in the next classroom.
Learning arithmetic and how to read and write are all incorporated in the post office. Writing letters and telegrams, reading the price lists and notices, adding up the cost of stamps, and of course making sure you have the right change for the toy money you buy the stamps with. Many problems are overcome by using these methods. Methods which understand the extent of the youngster's mind. They make what would normally be very difficult to grasp quite easy and straightforward, so causing less strain all round. Here, the children are absorbed in making a collective picture. The teacher sets a subject. In this case, it is a cavern with old pots, cobwebs and spiders. Then everybody contributes by either painting directly onto the large sheet or by painting on small sheets, cutting them out and pasting into position. Individual painting is, as ever, very popular, mainly because a child can express his views completely without inhibition. The result speaks for itself. After painting, all the children love a good wash. Well, some of them, well, a few of them, well, maybe not, but cleanliness is essential, especially before dinner. And here are at least six who enjoy it. The adequate kitchen staff are very busy during dinner time, trying to and managing to keep pace with little children and big appetites. The younger children are taught to set the tables and take it in turn to wait on each other. In many cases, teachers eat their meals with the children, which helps to produce a family atmosphere. The opportunity to show Mummy and Daddy around the school is not missed. But first, a little dancing demonstration to show just how much progress has been made since the last visit. Later on, everyone goes into the dining hall for tea. In one corner, there is a small shop selling biscuits, and ice lollies, run by the children and using real money. The most popular lesson of the day. Free play with plenty of noise and exercise. Also the chance of getting rid of all that surplus energy the grown-ups sometimes wish they had. The whistle goes and playtime is over, but for some it's as if playtime is about to start again when changing for physical education. This sometimes takes place in the school hall where much of the equipment is built in. 
it is then easily erected to form the gymnasium. Other schools have a separate gymnasium. Individual exercise and team games help in the development of strong, healthy, energetic children. the link between imagination and practice. From time to time, trips are arranged to various places of interest, and upon arriving back at school, the children have to illustrate the trip in many ways. This class recently made a journey to Devon, where they visited the lighthouse at Plymouth Hoe, Plymouth Harbour and other towns in the area. children are instructed to gather as much information as possible on particular parts of the trip. In this case, it is old houses, which is then set down in composition form, describing as fully as possible their impressions. Pictures are painted or collected from magazines. Models are made, and when the project is over, each child has produced a fully illustrated booklet of the trip, besides taking part in making the many models. Another way of learning from practice without having to go such a distance is in the science class. Everyone is interested to learn in this way that when air is heated it expands and when cooled quickly it contracts, rather spoiling the shape of the can. These experiments with heat are introduced in their broadest and most easily understood forms to make sure that the lesson learnt is well remembered. It seems in this case that it isn't only the water in the glass tube which is bubbling over. The interest in animals is inherent in most of us, so there is no difficulty learning about them from a book and then having the real thing to confirm what we have just read. In addition to the normal domestic pets, such as mice and goldfish, 
Some of the more unusual wild creatures are studied, such as thick insects. Not the easiest thing to draw, considering their camouflage is supposed to make them invisible. Besides animal life, there is also plant life, which is covered in more ways than one. Let's now take a look and a listen to one of the school string orchestras, making rather a pleasant sound. commercial office as a career, and this quite advanced training helps them considerably when they go for their first job, possibly with one of the large local establishments. seen that mathematics are no longer of great importance. This of course is not the case, for who is to fathom out how the computer works? Problems encountered in the field of electronics, general engineering, aircraft and even spacecraft will lead the adept minds of young mathematicians to overcome these difficulties. Difficulties which the machine cannot handle, hence the very thorough training in the art of figures. Away from theory for the moment, let's get down to some practical work, making things. But first of all, knowledge must be gained in using machines and hand tools. Operating a machine may look easy, but it has to be accurately set. Measuring instruments have to be understood and many things can go wrong which would ruin an otherwise simple job.
This type of training can never be wasted. If the pupils do not take to it as a profession, it will always be useful in later life when they may be needing to tinker with a car or make some furniture for the home. To be able to make a dress will be found most useful in future life, and even now the efforts are most commendable. With the old arts and skills of embroidery and needlework gradually dying out and machines taking over, it is encouraging to see the continuation of these crafts in the schools. Nobody can underestimate the importance of food, particularly food well cooked, and the chance to acquire this art is fully met with the best of modern kitchen equipment and supervision. Even so, things don't always turn out as we expect, and sticky problems arise. But when we sit down to taste our efforts, the problems are forgotten because we know now why it was obstinate and next time it will come out first go. The girls make quite a variety of dishes and usually take them home for mum and dad to sample. Several times a year, schools from all over the district send teams to take part in quite a colourful and inspiring open-air display of country dancing. Parents come along to see the many variations this form of recreation offers. Quite a lot of effort goes into preparing for these demonstrations and judging from the skill of the performers, it is a part of the old type schooling that is well worth retaining. An expert team is sometimes asked to take part. This gives the children and the parents a chance to see the more advanced country dancing routines. Sport is a subject which needs no encouragement. The pupils are more than keen to get onto the fields, even after school hours. Nevertheless, with the wonderful Hayes and Harlington Sports Stadium at their disposal, many are the opportunities for budding international athletes to show their worth. Every school has its sports day, and in this case, everybody who took part in it, whether they won or lost, receives a small prize in the form of sweets. The whole school gathers for the end of term prize giving. The district education officer presents the prizes as the headmaster calls out the names of the children who have well earned their gifts. 
sports challenge cups and other trophies are also presented today. It is also a day for goodbyes, because some of the pupils are leaving, but the majority will continue their thirst for knowledge with the many further education centres which cater for all ages. Whatever your age, you never stop learning. We believe that our general education system is a good one. But will our future citizens live up to the high standards we are setting them? Will they help to make a better job of the world than we have? These and many more are questions we ask ourselves, but are questions that only time can answer. <laughs>